Rift is a free-to-play, fairly traditional styled fantasy MMORPG that initially released in 2011. Since then, the game has released multiple expansions to a declining player base. Rift is most known for its open-world Rift events in which you kill enemies until a boss spawns and the Rift closes. This game also features PvP, raids, and a quick adventure mode that scales new players up to higher levels so they can participate in multiplayer content with friends. But before we jump into it, a quick word from today. Today's sponsor. Blade and Soul Revolution is a brand new free to play mobile action MMORPG on both Android and iOS. If you are a fan of the PC version of Blade and Soul, you're going to find this game very familiar as it features the same epic story, breathtaking cinematics, and lightning fast combo based action combat as on PC. Unlike typical mobile MMOs where you're rooted to the ground, Blade and Soul Revolution gives players an unparalleled feeling of freedom by allowing you to jump jump, glide and wind walk throughout the game's numerous regions and open world zones. If you're a PvPer, you're gonna love this game. It's got PvP faction wars for hundreds of players, as well as the arena where you can battle your way up the rankings. And don't worry PvE fans, this game also has dungeons, world bosses, a voice acted main story and plenty of challenging PvE content too. Pick from the game's five unique classes at launch, the Blade Master, Kung Fu Master, Soul Fighter, Force Master or Summoner, and upgrade your class with a total of 30 unique unlockable skills that you can combo together, taking mobile MMO combat to an entirely new level that we haven't seen before. Click the link in the description below to download Blade and Soul Revolution now and be one of the first to conquer this epic new MMORPG. I'll see you in game. Rift in 2021, it's been a long time since I've covered this game, about five and a half years or something, and the game still has my old dwarf character that I made all the way back then. I'm sure a lot has changed with Rift since then, so let's just make a new character and jump right into it. Two factions, the Guardians or the Defiance, you've got the Masoian, which look like humans, you've got High Elves, male and female options for each one, and you've got the Dwarves. That's a pretty cool hairstyle. Races for the Defiance, you've got the Eth, which look like evil humans. The Kaleri, which look like purple Avatar style characters. And the Bami race, big, chunky, giant type characters. And each of the races in this game have their own racial abilities. This dude looks like an elven Jesus. I'm tempted to be an elf for once. What is your calling? Warrior, cleric, mage, rogue, or the primalist, which requires that I spend money on some expansion. I haven't played a mage for a long time in one of these first impressions, so I'm going to be a mage. So there's many different types of mages. You've got the frozen defender, the left blade, the grave lord, nexus magus, flame cooler, frozen deity, and the terror master. And one of these styles of mage is actually a tank by the looks of it. Grave Lord's like a bloody necro. Yo, what different variations of warrior do you have? The tank, overlord, triumphal warrior, a healing warrior, a support warrior. Wow, the classes in this game are really interesting. You've also got different types of clerics, tank DPS and healer versions of clerics. Interesting classes, dude. You can be a tank rogue in this game. A combat medic, and this one uses a bow and arrow. Really intrigued by the classes in this game. I'm wondering what subcategories Primalist has. Okay, well, let me buy the credits then. Okay, if you don't want my money. I'm going to pick the recommended mage option, the one that uses raw elements. Sounds good to me. And let's check out the character customization. We can morph the fuck out of his face. We need to give him a more defined jaw. Trying to make a Chad elf. Nice. <laughs> Hold still. Dude, stop looking around. It's like you're trying to cut someone's hair and they're just... He looks like a Chad elf. Chelf. We are in the game. I have mail, I think. Your Trove reward? I haven't played Trove in like six years. Trove's cubic cloak. So it looks like I'm gonna have to kill some zombies. Use my Q ability. Fairly standard elemental looking attack. Cast time's a little bit long. The game's telling me to right click a target to attack. Don't teach people to click on monsters. Teach them to at least tab to target. Noob tutorial. I wonder what you guys think of the graphics. I think the game's kind of showing its age quite a bit. But then again, there's not too many MMOs that aren't showing their age these days. Oh, Corrupted Knight's coming in hot. So I've got an E ability. It's another long cast time ability. I've just pulled three things at once. Okay, we're going to run. 
That was a mistake. Okay, let's just not pull everything in the world. Big damage. One hit that thing. Jesus, almost dying on the tutorial. <laughs> Onwards we go through the worn, torn plains. These mobs I'm attacking look like budget versions of the Lich King from WoW. Quest complete, level three. Except the next one. Put a bunch of new abilities on my hot banner. We're good to go. Forks lightning into the instant cast. I do appreciate that the game's given me lots of abilities right off the bat. I hate games that insult my intelligence and have me using two abilities for like the first hour of gameplay. Level four, new ability. Go here and pray at the altar. Hit this one with the suck. Now I can pray in peace. Thank you very much. And the gods have answered my call. If only it was that easy in real life. I remember around the time when Rift launched, it was actually seen as a pretty decent WoW alternative around WoW Cataclysm time. Looking at it now, I don't think the starting experience has changed a whole lot since. Maybe the newer areas of the game look a little bit more updated. Yeah, the spell effects could be a little bit more impressive, couldn't they? Looks like throwing a bloody candle at the guy. That's not big damage. Go through the portal, turn into a ball of light. As you do, progressing very quickly through the early stages of this game seems fairly well paced right now, actually. Cleanse the horse, and now, okay, that was a little bit abrupt. It's perfectly normal horse now, yoink. So now we need to deal with this octopus monster coming out of the sky. So to destroy a rift, we need to kill the monsters defending the pillars, and then we need to disable the pillars. Smack, smack, crash, bang. Stage complete. Never mind. It summoned a boss. Oh, okay. Bloody giant dragons popped out. Dragons buffing this guy up. He's turned into a bloody demon monster. Oh, let me guess. We kill his ads and he runs off. Or lightning. Oh, okay. We're actually going to fight him ourselves, are we? All right, then. Hit him with the fireball. Oh, that does big damage. It's actually not that strong at all. Turned into a demon for what? And I guess that's the end of the starting experience. Thank you. Okay, another cutscene. Tutorial. In this brief tutorial video, we're. I don't need it. Silverwood, level 6 to 20, so now the game's starting to open up a bit. Always appreciate having instant cast mage abilities that you can use on the move. And so far, I've got a few of those. So at least the combat isn't completely static. Is this fucking dragon summoning the fire monsters? Have you finished? Can you stop? Fire dragon? What is going on? Yes, I can do something about it. Get speared, dragon. Inspire the centuries. Inspire. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Now I've stacked up like five or six quests to hand in. Let's see if this gets us to level 10. Seer's journal, level nine. Oh, surprisingly, handing in those six quests didn't really get me to level 10. Seems like XP rates are going to slow down dramatically from here. But uh, I'm enjoying questing through this forest area so far, looking very cozy. There's a rift on top of this hill. Let's go do it. The fuck is that? It's a bloody tentacle monster in the forest over there. Let's go do the rift first. There's a lot of tentacles in this game, isn't there? There's also a giant floating lava platform over here as well. Everywhere I look, there's some weird, crazy shit going on. Ascended Trove, what does this do? Okay, I see epics. I see big damage epics. Wow. This staff that I've just got, it does four times the damage of my current staff. That's also got me to level 10 as well, so that's really good XP. So doing the rifts seems way more worth it than doing the uh, normal quests. Weekly patron gift. Random cards. I don't know what I'm looking at, but thank you. Oh, thanks for clogging my bags up. I love it when that happens. There's different types of rifts. This is a life rift. I guess it has different enemies. Final bosses spawned. Kill the fairy. And that's another rift done. And that's level 11. Foothold defeated. What's a foothold? And I'm just wandering around the world killing stuff. And there's lots of like little objectives popping up for me to do. Really, dudes? Not very generous with the bag space, are you, Rift? You're having a fucking laugh, aren't you? That's bloody expensive. I was going to buy a bag slot, but because the price is 774 instead of 750, I'm not going to buy one out of principle. Scale up to a higher level. Ooh, that's cool. Sidekicking allows you to adventure with your friends no matter what level they are. That's a good feature. Inventory full. Don't you fucking love it. Join instant adventure. Okay. Wait, I'm on my own. Are you, are you sure? Okay, that scaled me to level 53. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, I should have killed the ads first. Good job, donkey. Zerg the breach. Will it kill the mobs? Run! Run! Oh, we're healing. We're healing. Oh. Are we going to be okay? I, I, okay. They, they disappeared. Not too sure where this healing's coming from. Oh, this guy, he saved me. Thank you, friend. So, what is this? We just get put in some random zone and have to do a series of quests together? I appreciate that the game's throwing me into the multiplayer stuff really quickly. Very cool. Definitely a good feature to have for a game that's not super popular nowadays. You've entered a raid group. Ooh, a lot more players in this one. Okay, this one I seem to have joined an actual raid. There's a group of, like, six of us. I don't know if this is a dungeon or an actual raid, but it's interesting. Okay, that's level 14. We're absolutely smashing through the levels. I'm scaled to level 65, so now I do really big damage. This is actually fun. The content seems unbelievably easy, though. This is obviously one of the newer zones, and the graphics of this place looks a lot more updated than the starting area, at least. This area here reminds me of, like, a budget Ulduar from World of Warcraft. Level 15, level 16, smash, smash, bop. Hammer. Oh, okay. Looks like it's boss fight time. Wow. Big giant skeleton monster. And the boss does appear to have actual mechanics. What happens if I run through the laser? Oh. Oh. You can soul walk at your Actual one hit. <laughs> I thought it was just like gonna tick me down. I didn't think it was gonna one hit me. I'm actually very happy that it one hits me because like the game has been very easy. I, I just wanted to see if that was what happened. <laughs> He's almost dead. Okay, run. Don't stand in the zappy thing. I've learned my lesson this time. And he's dead. Jesus, there's no waiting in between. You instantly just teleport to the next area. Chain running adventures. I guess this is how you get to max level super quick. We're now in a party of eight. I'm lost and I am confused. Jumper, okay. Yeah, glad I arrived in time for the boss fight. So for this boss fight, we're fighting a giant mech, and I'm guessing I need to stand in this. Run into the light of the positive shield. Action. Packed. Combat. This actually feels a little bit like LFR in World of Warcraft, where no one's actually trying that hard. Like, half the group's just, like, AFK. And there's, like, five people carrying the rest of the group. Ooh, okay. Level 18. Nice, I've actually got some new abilities now. Oh, brilliant. We finally have an AoE ability. Um, what the fuck kind of boss is that? Imagine getting sucked in by that. No thanks. And he's dead. Another adventure completed, and we instantly teleport to the next one. So now we're in some kind of weird sunken pirate temple area. This adventure mode moves so quickly that there's absolutely no downtime whatsoever. At least it's keeping me engaged. The transmog system in this game actually seems surprisingly decent. Every bit of armor I'm collecting gets added to my wardrobe. I didn't realize this game had a wardrobe or transmog system, so I appreciate that. And this is my new appearance. Looking good, dude. I guess I should stop getting carried through this adventure and actually contribute now. So now we're killing crab people. But that wasn't the real boss. The tentacles are the real boss. Oh my god! What is that? Yo, this is epic. It's a bloody giant kraken monster. I wasn't expecting to be jumping into bloody raid boss levels of fights so early on into this game as a new player. I think I'm going to get one more level up and see if I can jump into some PvP maybe. That'd be cool. Look at that. Big giant dwarf head statue. So I've got a big construct boss to deal with now. Pop the damage. Let's go. Level 21. I decided to leave the adventure party here and see what other content the game has to offer. But I definitely enjoyed the whole quick adventure mode thing. Very good for new players just getting that multiplayer feeling early on into the game. I'm pretty sure not too many people still play Rift, so... It was a nice surprise knowing that I could still group with some people, at least, and do some multiplayer stuff. This looks like some cosy little hobbit village or something. If you haven't realised already, I like cosy looking areas in my fantasy MMORPGs. When you turn off the UI and you're in certain areas of the game, the graphics actually don't look too bad for such an old game. Random Warfront. Sounds like PvP. 
I guess one of the cool things about the rift system in this game is if you're waiting in queue for something, then you can always just go do the rifts and you don't have to like read quests or anything like that. It's all fairly intuitive. It's a shame I outleveled it so hard really. All of the mobs here are just gonna get one tapped. Or maybe not. Now we're in Gloomwood, very dark and spooky, a little bit like Duskwood in WoW. And we've got Cthulhu up here trying to suck everything in. Okay, I can get on board with the octopus sucky Cthulhu thing in the sky, but this random crab claw, that's a little bit much. That's where I draw the line. I hope I can find a PvP battle. It's like the last thing I really want to check out. How big is the world? Oh, the world in Rift is pretty big. Based on looking at the world map, I guess the max level right now is like 70. What is that? There's lots of weird and wonderful creatures in this game, isn't there? So this giant building here is my faction's capital, apparently. Um, it doesn't really look like a capital city, it just looks like a building. Literally no players around though. And I guess this guy here is the king. Oh wait, no. The squirrel is the king. This guy's just protecting the squirrel. And as you'd expect from a king, he has hella bitches. Hello friends. How are you today? Imagine waking up in the middle of the night, look into your side and this thing is just fucking staring at you next to your bed. Nightmare fuel. I'm gonna give it nine more minutes waiting in queue for the war fronts. If not, I'm just gonna assume that PvP in this game is dead. Playing this game is kind of making me want to revisit Lord of the Rings Online. I think it's been years since I played that game as well. That's a shame. I was really interested in checking out the PvP of this game. So I can't find a game of war fronts. I can't queue for looking for raid because I need to be level 70. I can only really continue doing the instant adventures and just leveling and questing normally. But I think I've seen enough for this Rift revisit, so let's just wrap it up here. So after revisiting Rift for a bit in 2021, my updated pros and cons for the game are as follows. I think the game has an interesting class system. I like that there's a role of tank, healer, and DPS for each of the starting archetypes. It's super cool that you can spec to be a tank mage, for example. The game is free to play. If you're looking for a game that's similar to WoW but not WoW, then Rift might be a decent option. I enjoyed the game's instant adventure system, and it was surprising that the game gives you a way to group up with other players so quickly, despite being a fairly low population game. It's also a large open world game in which you can move between zones without loading screens and invisible barriers. The biggest con for Rift has to be the lack of people playing the game. It seems kinda dead and honestly feels kinda sad playing an MMO without other players. You'd have to go into this with a group of friends to really get the most out of it, I think. I was disappointed that I couldn't find a game of PvP, for example. The combat and general gameplay is like a less smooth and polished version of WoW. The game is published by Gamigo, who are probably the most useless donkey publisher I've ever had contact with in the gaming industry. I won't get into specifics, but I don't trust this company, and the people in charge are utterly incompetent. Rift as a whole does just feel a bit out dated right now and doesn't really offer anything too unique to compete with current MMOs. Overall, I remember seeing Rift as quite an interesting MMO when it first launched. The whole dynamic Rift events spawning in the world were really interesting and unique at the time, but over the years more MMOs have incorporated similar dynamic events into their worlds, and Rift no longer had that unique selling point. Development wise, it seems like they just fell behind the competition and couldn't keep up, but during my time playing and going through the zones, there was a certain cosy feeling I felt of being in the world of this game that I can't really explain. I can see why people enjoyed Rift as a decent alternative to WoW, and I think this will be remembered as a decent MMO at the time of its release, that just couldn't keep up with the competition, and was screwed by having an F tier publisher. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts and memories about Rift in the comments below, what do you think the best thing about this game was? Shout out to exit lag for improving my ping during the recording of this video. Links to them can be found in the description below as well as my coupon code. Social media on screen, new content coming soon. Thanks for watching, I hope you all had a successful day and I'll see you again next time.